All right, so. This is the ACO 3098B. We're gonna do a couple little configuration tests. Right now I'm connected on Bluetooth uh, with the third option, Bluetooth T. I want to show that it does not recognize the keyboard in wireless modes. So I'm gonna to switch to the 2.4 adapter. So now I'm on wireless. And as you can see, the cloud driver still does not recognize it. So the Echo Cloud driver only recognizes the keyboard when it's plugged in through USB. So let's get that guy plugged in. Switch back to wired USB mode. All right. Let's see if we get it now. Oh, you have to, yeah, for some reason, when you can switch to the USB mode, you have to unplug it and plug it back in before the driver adapt the, the software recognizes it. I say that confidently, I'm sure it will. All right, so once you're connected through the cloud driver, these are the functions you'll see. You have main, lighting, macro, and support. So the support page where is where you can check for your firmware update for your keyboard. In this case, the reason I wanted to verify that the Echo cloud driver would not work with the attached or with the wireless address, because when you click on the check for update, it recommends to verify you're working in the wired mode, which obviously we are because you can't use the cloud driver in wireless. So it says before upgrading, unplug the receiver and connect the data cable, make sure it's in wired. We know it is because the cloud driver doesn't work wireless, which means that either in the past they were planning on implementing wireless connectivity for the cloud driver or in the future they're planning on doing that. So. We're gonna go ahead. Oh, strictly prohibited to unplug or touch the device. Hmm. Wow. B very serious. Don't don't touch the don't touch the <laughs> the, the device. Interesting. Up to date. All right. So, for more up to date, let's take a quick look at remapping. Let's say I want to use the F11 key for the home key. You can add modifiers if you want to do a control function, but let's say I just want F11 to be home. So it immediately applies it and restarts the board. It's a little bit slower than, say, with VIA, but it is immediate. So I like F11 and F12 to be home and end. And then insert the most useless key still on a keyboard. The only time you ever push insert is when you have accidentally pushed it already and you need to turn it off. So I just want to be print screen. All right, so it's pretty easy to remap your keys. The keys in red are not modifiable. If you want to, you have a function layer where you select the function combo. The downside to the cloud driver, the Echo cloud driver is that a lot of the keys are restricted. So currently the function one through function eight are rebound to different. This one's bound to my computer. Function two is set to email. Function three is media search. Anyway, there's some there's some bound functions. Function C is calculator. The problem here is that the F9 through page down function options are not 
modifiable. Uh, and I don't like that. I think any any function you want to have on your keyboard should be remappable to any key except maybe the function key, um, maybe the escape key. But if you want to remap your media keys, I feel like that should be an option. So this is the one negative comment I have about the software is that it, there are a lot of restricted keys. But let's say I want to remap um, backspace and I want backspace to be my combo for close tab. So I'm going to make backspace control F4. What am I, what am I favorite? You think control F4 is pretty similar to hitting function backspace, but I can hit function backspace with my right hand easier than I can hit it with my little uh, control F4 with my left. The other thing I might do here, no, that's it. That's pretty much the whole, there's not a lot to rebind here, but anything in yellow is unbound. Anything in red is unbindable. Anything in blue has been rebound to some other function. Mute, volume up, volume down, etc. There's also on the base layer, you can see that Alt and function are not modifiable. It's because on the function layer, you have a second, you can hit both alt and function and access another row. And this one is entirely open, which I appreciate. So you can bind alt and function, and you can remap any of the keys except for alt function win and escape, which is, I guess, okay. Let's take a look at the lighting. Right now we're set to always on with the rainbow. Um, you can choose a color. If you don't like rainbow, you can set it to a specific color. You've got the RGB palette. You can pick anything you want pretty much. Um, the note here is that I have the jelly pink switches. It makes all the light coming through just a little bit pink. So even if I select what in theory should be a white light still going to come through as a pink due to the switches different switches will of course have different tints we're going to go through some of the lighting options let's make this up speed up a little so you've got your standard breathing in rainbow you could set it to breathing in specific color if you'd like the typical RGB choices here meteor ripple We're going to make this its own video just because it's going to be such a long video of such a specific configuration choices. If you have any questions about the configuration, the lighting um, choices, the software, feel free to shoot me a message on YouTube or on Instagram. Um, I'm always more than happy to talk about specific things. Light shadow. Um, a few of these lighting options have choices in or out up or down it just changes the direction of the animation i'm leaving most of these on the rainbow um flowers blooming you don't have the choice but i'll leave these on rainbow um but anything that has the choice over here for uh dazzle or current color uh just 
know that it could also be a fixed color. If you like the pink board and you like the pink lights, there you go. No Trace is an interesting one to me because I don't I don't know what it's doing. This looks just like steady color dazzle. Um I don't know the difference between no trace and always on. But anyway, theoretically there's a difference. Imagine if you know the difference between no trace and always on, let me know. Endless loop to the right or left. User picture is the per key option. Um, if you want to make your own per key colorway. Oh, I should. I don't know how to undo that. Hmm. There we go. So the difference between this and some of the more popular uh, gaming brands is there isn't a way that I know of to bind a lighting profile to a particular applica application. So let's say you like to play FPS um, games, you want your WASD cluster lit up when you pull up whatever game you like. Um, that's not an option here. You can set individual keys to whatever color you want. You cannot, as far as I know, tell it to select this lighting when you have a specific application going. So the next two, the music follow EDM, are based on the output from your computer. It doesn't have a speaker built in, so if you have music playing, <clears throat> it'll generate uh, lighting based on the music. So those two are relatively self-explanatory. Hmm. Intersect doesn't seem to do anything. Um, but, but it follows all system sounds, so even if it's the Windows sound. So even if I have it on mute, like this, I can play. I'm playing music. My computer is generating an audio signal. My, mute, my speakers are muted, so it's not playing the audio out loud, but it's still generating the lighting effect on the keyboard. All right, last one is, I think, the most interesting, at least the most unique. It's called Light Shadow, and you can select if you have more than one screen attached, and it basically mirrors the lighting of whatever you have on your screen. So if I have a bright configuration, right, the keyboard goes brighter as the screen I wish I had that let me okay let's pause this let me get you paint paint does paint still work okay so here we go so most of my screen is white right now I'm gonna just paint I haven't used paint in so long. all right paint over oh, here pink <laughs> this is purple so it 
it generally follows the color of your screen. Um, ooh. Oh, that's, that's bad. There you go. So that's interesting. I don't, I don't know who's going to love this, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know who's going to feel like this is the lighting color they've been waiting for, but it is interesting. Real briefly, I want to show that there is no way to bind a particular lighting effect. So if you like a lighting effect, there's no choices here to say, I want lighting effect X. You can macro standard medias, brightness up, brightness down, and mouse choices. But there is no way to bind your favorite lighting effect to a key. All right, for the macros, macros are a little poorly implemented. So I'm going to select macro one. I'm going to start. I'm going to that's going to be OK, I'm going to <laughs> let's try that again. OK. All right, so I'm going to set it. I want it to play my string exactly once. So I select loop one, I hit save. I go to my keyboard choice. I'm going to bind it to the Alt FN layer, select the macro, hit confirm. That will send the macro to the keyboard. So now when I do function Alt space, it should input my string. Yeah, okay. So you have choices in your macro. You've got loop. You can loop as many times as you want to input the string. Button control on off. If you select button control, it'll just continue to loop that string. Um, but the difference is when I've saved the macro here, I need to go to the key binding and reassign it to resend the macro to the keyboard. Because the macro will work even when it's unplugged. But you can only, but if you edit it, you have to resend it. So it's just going to continue to type out this string over and over uh, until you hit the macro again. Same thing with the touch repeat, except in this case, it will put it'll input the string as long as you are holding down the macro button. So as long as I'm holding it down, it'll type out whatever my macro is. And when you let go, it will release and then start over when you do it again. So those are the three macro functions. And that is the echo cloud driver software. Thanks for watching and good luck out there.